The Eastern Conference Final is now done with two games, and quite frankly, that could be the halfway point of this series after what happened last night. The big news from Game 2 between the Indiana Pacers and Boston Celtics is that Tyrese Halliburton is hurt. And if he is hurt for an extended period of time, then this series is over. Um, it's such a bummer because Halliburton was just getting back into it and just hitting his stride, and you could see the, the joy he has in his game and the... The, the the skill that he can play with and how much that elevates everyone around him. That is, it's such a hit because he is so much fun to watch. And like I said, what was just starting to get it going. You did see Pascal Siakam step up last night, but if there's no Halliburton, like he just, he and the rest of these guys just can't keep up. Boston, I thought, had a much better game plan for game two going after Miles Turner. Um, Siakam still absolutely took advantage of them at times, and he's going to do that because he is still one of the more talented players in the NBA. Um, he's electric uh, as an offensive player, but as the number one focus for this very good Boston defense, it's going to be a bit of an issue going forward. So for the Pacers, like, it's quite simple. If there's no Halliburton, there's no series for them. And that this could end up being a sweep um, if that is to, to be the case. I would expect the Pacers to come out guns blazing in Game 3 um, against the Pacers here, but we'll we'll see. Um, on the Boston side, once again, the Jays step up. And for Brown, it's another fantastic game. His scoring has been really impressive this series. Um, his shooting has been fantastic. His ability to get to the rim has been really, really, really good. Um, Boston has been able to get into the paint pretty much at will this entire series, and Brown has been been basically at the center of that for these games. And to, to me, he is hitting another level. Um, and look, it, it is not coming against the most resistance. While the Pacers are one of the more dynamic offensive teams we have seen in the NBA in quite some time, defensively, ugh, need some work. Um, and Boston is one of the better, again, offensive teams we've seen. So it's it's a tough matchup, but it, it is showing that Brown does have that other level to his game. And I, I have been so impressed. And look, I, I am not a member of the Jalen Brown fan club. I thought when Tatum was hurt in the the, the NBA Finals a couple years ago um, that he needed to step up, and he didn't. And I thought last year um, they needed Brown to step up, and he didn't. But now he is, and it, it's it's been really quite the thing to see. For Boston as well, you get Tatum now finding his stride in the second half. He, he really found out that he could get to his spot, which is that free throw line jumper, basically anytime he wanted to. And he did, and it, it really started to, to fall. And you think about it, the fact that he's basically had one good half in the first two games of this series, and they're up two zip, that is fantastic news for the Boston Celtics, and is really, really, really impressive. So, um, th this has been... This has been a, a really fun series, and I think for Tatum, there is a lot of criticism on him because they needed Brown to, to kind of bail them out in game one, um, and I'm not saying, oh, no, 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 everyone has it, I'll just back off, it's fine, but he is one of the few stars that at least seems like he is comfortable playing a secondary role if he needs to, and it's getting Brown going, Holiday has been going, White has played all right offensively as well, it, everyone else is kind of getting into a groove, and Tatum can kind of get his when he needs to get his. Now, that does, the, the obvious exception to that is late in the game in game one, where they kind of needed him to step up, and again, it was Brown who was coming up with big shot after big shot, um, but that's how this team is built. It, it's not just one guy going out there and getting it done. They have a few players who they trust, and uh, overall, I think people are being a bit too hard on the Celtics for a relatively easy path here to the Eastern Conference Final. Yes, th this has not been the most resistance faced with Miami, Cleveland, and now Indiana. Um, the, the East, it, it turns out, like, with the injuries that we saw, again, to the Knicks, to the Celtic, or sorry, to the, the Bucks, and a, a little bit to the 76ers in Embiid trying to work his way back, um, all the top teams in the East just kind of crumbled around, and so it has been relatively smooth sailing for the Celtics so far. But I, I do think, like, when you look over at the West, who would you have favored over the Celtics in the West playoffs? Like, Denver probably. Um, as it's gone on, maybe Minnesota? That's probably it. Like, if Dallas ends up winning the, the West final and um, Boston comes out of the East, the Celtics are going to be favored. And so, yeah, no, they have not been tested overly 
uh, so far in, in this postseason. But part of that is just how damn good they are. And they've fallen asleep at the wheel a couple of times, and that's been very, very frustrating to watch. Um, but th this is still one of the best teams in the league. And they're doing this with their own injury issues with um, Dingus Pingus, um, Kristaps Porzingis, on his way uh, back from an injury as well. So I think people need to chill on the Celtics. This is still legitimately one of the best teams in the NBA. All